Nestled in the rolling hills and dense forests of Michigan, the small farming community of Maple Grove was known for its fertile land and tight-knit families. For generations, the farmers of Maple Grove had worked their fields, raising crops and livestock to sustain their modest lives. But in the summer of 1923, an unexpected and terrifying menace began to plague the community, two monstrous Bigfoots that emerged from the depths of the nearby forest. It began with small, unsettling signs. At first, the farmers noticed trampled crops and the occasional missing chicken. They chalked it up to wolves or foxes and reinforced their coops and pens. But as the weeks passed, the incidents escalated. Entire fields of corn were flattened overnight, and cows and sheep vanished without a trace. The once peaceful nights were now filled with strange, guttural roars and the eerie sounds of heavy footsteps. One evening, farmer Bill Hartman, a stoic and respected member of the community, gathered his neighbors in his barn. We can't keep losing our livelihood to whatever's out there, Bill declared, his face grim. We need to find out what's happening and put a stop to it. A plan was devised. A group of men, armed with rifles and lanterns, would stake out the fields at night, hoping to catch the culprits in the act. For several nights, they saw nothing but shadows and heard only the usual nighttime noises. Just as the resolve began to waver, the Bigfoots made their presence known. On a moonlit night, the farmers heard a rustling in the cornfield. Bill signaled for silence, and the men crouched low, their eyes scanning the darkness. Suddenly, two enormous figures emerged from the tall stalks. Standing over eight feet tall, covered in thick, matted fur, and with eyes that glowed ominously in the lantern light, the creatures were unlike anything the farmers had ever seen. It's them, whispered Jacob, the youngest farmer in the group, his voice trembling with a mix of fear and awe. Without warning, the Bigfoots lunged at the nearest cow, easily lifting the terrified animal off the ground. Bill raised his rifle and fired, the sound of the shot echoing through the night. The bullet struck one of the creatures in the shoulder, causing it to roar in pain and drop the cow. The other Bigfoot, undeterred, charged at the group of farmers, its eyes burning with rage. Panic set in as the men fired their rifles, the air filled with the deafening sounds of gunfire and the growls of the enraged Bigfoots. The creatures were fast and powerful, their massive arms swatting away bullets as they advanced. The farmers retreated, their hearts pounding with fear and adrenaline. Bill, realizing that conventional weapons were barely slowing the beasts, shouted, Fall back to the barn. We need to regroup and think of something else. The farmers ran, the Bigfoots hot on their heels. They reached the barn and slammed the heavy doors shut, barricading them with anything they could find. The creatures pounded on the doors, their roars shaking the wooden structure. Inside, the farmers frantically discussed their next move. Bullets aren't enough, Bill said, wiping sweat from his brow. We need to be smarter. These things are strong but not invincible. Jacob, still catching his breath, remembered an old family story. My grandpa used to tell tales about trapping wolves using pits covered with branches and leaves. Maybe we can try something similar. The plan was risky, but it was their best shot. The farmers worked through the night, digging a deep pit near the edge of the forest and covering it with a flimsy layer of branches and leaves. They baited the trap with a few of their remaining livestock, hoping to lure the Bigfoots into the pit. As dawn approached, the exhausted farmers hid nearby, waiting. Hours passed, and just as their hope began to wane, the creatures emerged from the forest, drawn by the scent of the animals. The Bigfoots moved cautiously, their keen senses alert for danger. The first Bigfoot stepped onto the camouflaged pit and plummeted into the hole, its roar of surprise echoing through the clearing. The second creature, enraged and confused, charged towards its trapped companion but fell into the pit as well. The farmers sprang into action, quickly covering the pit with a reinforced wooden grate. The Bigfoots thrashed and roared, but the pit was deep, and the grate held firm. For the first time in weeks, the farmers felt a glimmer of hope. Though the creatures were trapped, the danger was far from over. Bill knew they couldn't keep the Bigfoots confined indefinitely. They had to decide what to do next. We need to get rid of them for good, he said, his voice firm. If they escape, they'll come back angrier and more dangerous than ever. The farmers gathered their strongest horses and tied ropes to the grate, pulling it away with great effort. 
As the Bigfoots tried to climb out, the men threw flaming torches into the pit. The creatures recoiled, their roars turning to cries of anguish. Reluctantly, the farmers continued to throw torches until the creatures' cries ceased. The defeat of the Bigfoots brought a somber relief to Maple Grove. The farmers had protected their livelihoods and their families, but at a great cost. The memory of the battle and the creatures' haunting roars would stay with them forever. In the weeks that followed, the farmers repaired their damaged fields and rebuilt their lives. They shared their story with neighboring communities, who listened with a mixture of disbelief and respect. The tale of the Bigfoot battle became a part of local legend, a reminder of the strength and determination of the people of Maple Grove. Years passed, and the scars of that summer slowly healed. The forest, once a source of fear, returned to its natural state of tranquility. The farmers continued to work their land, their bonds stronger than ever after facing such a formidable enemy. Maple Grove grew, welcoming new families and new generations. The story of the Bigfoots was passed down, a tale of bravery and unity that inspired the children of the community. The pit where the creatures had been trapped became a symbol of their victory, a place where the farmers would gather to remember the night they fought back and won. Bill Hartman, now an old man, would often sit by the pit with his grandchildren, recounting the events of that fateful summer. We faced monsters, he would say, his eyes reflecting the firelight, but we stood together, and that's what saved us. And so, the legend of the night the farmers fought back against the Bigfoots lived on, a testament to the indomitable spirit of Maple Grove and its people.